Look past the river towns dotting its banks, behind the main commercial channel filled with chugging barges, and you'll see the often flooded backwaters of the mighty Mississippi, the wilderness of the Midwest, the lifelong home of Kenny Solway. My appreciation for the river is this. It, it's quite simple. It's given me my life. Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. When the breath of the river is rising to meet the sun, a quietness envelops you. You may hear some ducks or geese talking, gabbling back and forth. But most things seem to be quiet when the mists are heavy. The trees come and go like ghosts. It is the breath of the river. Well, I built this shack uh, with my own two hands and, and a whole lot of sweat back about 30 years ago. A snapping turtle that I found floating out here in the, in the big lake in the spring. Then I hung it up in a tree by this, with this twine string and thought the critters would, would hollow that all out for me over summer. And I'd have a nice turtle shell. To... I came in the fall, it was still hanging in that tree and it had petrified itself. Kenny has spent much of his life here as a hermit turned outdoorsman, a hunter, trapper, fisherman, all in one, living off the land in a shack only a stone's throw away from the water's banks. The dog has one glaring defect. They don't live long enough. A life summed up in one legendary nickname, the last river rat. A river rat is somebody who's too crazy to freeze to death too full of hot air to drown, and too ornery and independent to call anybody boss. Amen, brother. When the tundra swans arrive, it is a sign of winter approaching. When the tundra swans leave, winter is here. In a world of constant motion, Kenny is a speed bump of wisdom, softly slowing the pace of life, but filling its vacuum with knowledge gleaned from decades along the brackish backwaters of the upper Mississippi. Kenny's life as an expert trapper, fisherman, and all-around outdoorsman took a sudden turn two decades ago when a local game warden stopped the last river rat dead in his tracks. The warden asked Kenny, to share his unparalleled outdoor knowledge with local school teachers. It was an unwelcome request for a woodland hermit. I said, I should go? I never liked school. I never liked school teachers. There's going to be 55 of them. I'm going to be surrounded by them. Right now, I ain't so sure I like game wardens. And Jim Everson looked me right square in the eye and he said, you are one of the most selfish, greedy people I ever met in my life. All you do is sit back here and take, take, take from nature. You don't give nothing back. The stern lecture brought the last river rat out of hiding and into classrooms and local gatherings around his community. A man who often spoke vividly about the changing seasons of the Mississippi was transforming himself. And I found out a most peculiar paradox. If I am to see the natural world, the great circle of life remain healthy and happy, I need to give it away in order to keep it. The last river rat's gifts are his tales and a reputation as a master storyteller built by penning multiple books each chronicling a life most Americans can barely fathom. Kenny's readers have discovered a man seemingly trapped in a bygone era. No electricity, no running water, and where trips for dinner could take days of strenuous work. Kenny's tales culminated in 2007 with the premiere of a BBC documentary which profiled the last river rat. My name is Kenny Solway, and I'm known as the last river rat. 
folks say I'm a dying breed. My home has always been the Mississippi River. And here I've survived all my life as a hunter, trapper, fisherman, and writer. The river is my lifeblood, and indeed it is the lifeblood of our nation. It splits America in half, so to speak, and yet it joins it together. Filmed by renowned Midwestern cinematographer Neil Reddick, the BBC special endeared viewers to an impassioned defender of wildlife and his majestic Mississippi home. The images and stories would later win a National Emmy and catapult a one-time hermit into cult-like status throughout the Midwest. A mysterious, magical place. Okay, Diane. Thank you very much. Thank very you nice for, to meet you. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Today, Kenny visits bookstores across the country, like a recent stop in Des Moines, to spread a message of conservation. We have two resources, great resources, our natural resources and our human resources. Right here are the second most, these children are the second most important resource in the world. His latest book, Muskrat for Supper, is aimed at spreading his real life tales to our nation's youth. And he's not done yet. The last river rat says there are plenty of tales left to tell about his affectionate bond with swamp dogs and his vision for the natural world. It's one of those drizzly, foggy autumn mornings, and the water drips from the leaves into the slough below. Drip, drip, drip. Woo hoo 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 hoo! A barred owl calls. The old dog don't even pick up his head. He says, ah, I've heard that a thousand times. I'm tired today. The man who once lived as a river bottom hermit has come full circle. And while he's now married and spending his full time days away from the shack he called home for decades, he's never forgotten his roots deep in the boot sucking Mississippi mud. When I need to recharge my batteries, I, this is where I come, which is more often than, than, uh, than it used to be. The term river rat is not given to a person, it is earned. A river rat makes a living with the Mississippi River. I say with rather than off the river because to live with something is to live in harmony. To live off of something is like a parasite, a bloodsucker, a louse, a wood tick. This is my second life now. And it has been a wonderful second life. The first one I spent doing all the things that a river rat does. And now I, I talk about all the things that a river rat does. So the natural world is still giving me my life. I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> 